Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today I wanted to uh, introduce a special video um, just for those of you who continue to ask this question. <laughs> um, how to keep my Merc alive. That's right. This is the how to keep my Merc alive video. So buckle up because we've got a lot of things to go over. And if you're really interested in how to keep, how, you know, in the topic of how to keep your Merc alive, um, I'm going to go over everything that you need to know um, to make your Merc stronger, more survivable, um, and uh, give him the best chance of, uh, you know, living. Um, I'm also going to go over some reasons why he might not live despite your best efforts, and um, that is unfortunate, but it is coded into the game, so there's really not much you can do about it. Um, so first off, what is the first and most important thing, um, and I am actually doing them these in sort of an order of importance, um, and that is faster hit recovery that's right faster hit recovery is the most important thing that you can do for your mercenary and you might be asking why why is faster hit recovery the most important thing that you can do well we're going to go over that so i have a graphic here ah yes graphics um so if we read at the top of this graphic it says the re hit recovery or the hit recovery counter is triggered by any hits that take off more than one twelfth of your character's maximum hit points. When this happens, your character is knocked into a hit stun animation, which must be completed before you can take another action. Characters or mercs or monsters may be stunned repeatedly, trapping them in a stun lock. A very dangerous situation. There are also a variety of skills for players and monsters that can cause a target to be stunned. Other skills and spells effects can cause all hits to stun while they are in effect. So, um, it actually gets a little bit more complicated than this. And um, I need you guys to know that one twelfth of your character's maximum hit points is not the end-all be-all of what this is. It actually... The percentage chance of a faster hit recovery stun, or a, uh, a, a FHR stun as I like to call them, happening um, increases with the amount of damage that you do and decreases with the amount of damage you do. For instance, if you did one-eighth of a character's maximum hit points, um, there would be a much smaller probability of an FHR stun. Or if you did a... Um, you know, one twenty-fourth of a character's uh, hit points, you're going to have a very high chance of that triggering. Um, it actually does matter how much damage you do, and the more damage you do, the more chance that a FHR stun will proc. Um, and as you can see here by the chart, we have um, all of the characters, and we have their particular faster hit recovery breakpoints. So faster hit recovery breakpoints is how long it takes for you to recover from a faster hit recovery stun. Uh, basically, there's an animation that plays, and this is how many frames it takes for your character to recover from that animation. Um, so, for instance, in the case of the slowest of the, the characters of the sorceress, if she is running 0% faster recovery, she is at 15 frames uh, recovery speed, which is why the sorceress ends up getting stun locked all the damn time um, in early levels, because without faster recovery of any type, um, at 0, she is the most vulnerable to faster hit recovery stun locks, as was displayed up here in the top, literally boldened in red. Now this stun lock is extremely deadly, and not only is it extremely deadly, but it also prevents you from being able to do anything to defend yourself. So number one, you're stuck. Number two, you can't defend yourself. And number three, there's no way out. All right. So having an appropriate amount of faster hit recovery is very important. Uh, for characters as well as mercenaries. Now, when you take a look at the faster hit recovery breakpoints for the mercenaries, what you will see is that the Act 2 mercenary is exactly the same breakpoints as the Sorceress, which is terrible. Um, this is because the Act <coughs> 2 mercenary has literally one of the worst breakpoints as far as... Um, as far as faster hit recovery goes. The only one that beats the Act 2 Mercenary and the Sorceress is the Act 3 Mercenary, um, which is the caster class of the, uh, of the Mercs. And, um, you know, it's really a pretty a big deal here because if you don't have any faster hit recovery on your Act 2 Mercenary, there's a very good chance he's going to get stuck in stun locks and he's going to die. Now, why is this an issue with Act 1, Act 2, and Act 5 Mercenaries, but not necessarily as much with the Act 3 Mercenary? 
because the Act 1, the Act 2, and the Act 5 mercenaries all can sustain themselves through lifesteal, okay? When you are stuck in a FHR stun lock, <laughs> you can't attack. And because you can't attack, you can't lifesteal. So all that wonderful damage and all that wonderful lifesteal that your mercenary has is useless when he gets stuck in one of these FHR stun locks. And this is why the mercs die so quickly, is because they can't fight back. Um, in, in many, many situations, you will find that your mercenary is just stuck in one of these ridiculous loops of getting knocked back or stunned over and over and over again. And the solution is to give him some faster hit recovery items. Any faster hit recovery is better than none. As you can see with the Act 3 Mercenary, a mere 20% brings him from 15 frames to 11, which is a pretty big bump. Only 20% faster hit recovery has a huge benefit to his survivability. But look at our friend the Act 5 Mercenary. The Act 5 Mercenary's faster hit recovery breakpoints are a 0 is a 9. For the Act 2 Mercenary to even approach 9, he needs 42% faster hit recovery increase, which is pretty crazy. It's pretty hard to get your Mercenary's faster hit recovery up to those kind of levels. But in the same situation, the Act 5 Mercenary with a mere 48% is now at 5 frames and is literally right up there with the Assassin and the Barbarian for faster hit recovery breakpoints, which means he's recovering from faster recovery stuns extremely quickly. He's getting back into the action, he's hitting his target, he's stealing his life, and he's not vulnerable. And this is the most important thing, is that these, this faster hit recovery stun really just represents extreme vulnerability at very specific moments. Now, I'm going to take you over to some of my characters. I'm going to show you how I have them set up. So first off, let's go take a look at Pyrotechnics. Uh, Pyrotechnic is running a Act 3 Mercenary. And because the Act 3 Mercenary has the worst fast rate recovery breakpoints in the game, I've actually kind of prioritized him uh, to have a very high fast rate recovery. So um, he is currently running 130%, and he's actually going to get a little bit higher because I'm going to socket Kay Hagen's with a... 7% uh, faster hit recovery jewel. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because if you take a look at the chart, my Act 3 Mercenary's faster hit recovery breakpoint is 133. So being at 130% does him no good. He needs to be a little bit higher. He needs to be 3% higher to get that, that final 7 frame faster hit recovery breakpoint, which is going to help him immensely because he is a caster type that runs away. And so it's very important to remember that if he's trying to run away and he gets stuck in a stun lock, he's not going to be able to run away and um, he's going to die. Um, so I need him to be pushing out damage. I need him to be running away when he needs to. I need him to be, you know, st to be survivable. I don't want him to die on a regular basis. Um, he also has 87% faster cast. And the reason why he's at 87% faster cast is because he has an 86% breakpoint. Um, and he cannot go any higher than that 86% breakpoint, so there's no reason to bring him higher than 86%, really. Um, so I actually m measured out his faster cast rate to the point where he's getting the exact amount that he needs. Um, we can also go take a look at some of my other characters. So, for instance, I also have... <laughs> Uh, I also have the North Star Paladin's uh, Mercenary, which uh, the North Star Paladin's Mercenary is a little different. Um, he's actually set up for a specific purpose, um, but he should also have some faster hit recovery as well. They usually do have some form of faster hit recovery, and um, if they don't, they usually end up dying on a regular basis. And my boy here is currently at zero, unfortunately. And um, this is because he is a very specific mercenary for a very specific purpose. Um, I built him for a double regen, um, and uh, I think I'm going to have to maybe swap out Andariel's for a Bulwark or something like that so he can actually get a little bit of faster hit recovery. Uh, but Bulwark was not available at the time when I made this mercenary, which is unfortunate. Uh, which brings me to the next topic, and um, this is the one that I feel is the most important, and that is uh, Life Leech. So, Life Leech is probably the second most important uh, thing that you can do for a mercenary. Um, and the reason why Life Leech is so important is because it allows the mercenary a way 
to recover hit points when they wouldn't otherwise normally be able to. Um, and this comes down to your equipment loadout. So for instance, my mercenary right now is utilizing several pieces of equipment. Um, one of them has to be on this character because I am running a prayer merc that is utilizing the meditation aura, so he has no other choice other than to use an inside polearm. The inside polearm does not have life leech. <clears throat> So, he needs life leech from another source. Um, and if he doesn't get his life leech from another source, then he's going to be SOL. Um, in this particular case, he's getting his life leech from number one, the Andariel's Visage, and number two, also the Chains of Honor, which I'm pretty sure the Chains of Honor is literally just on him because I had it sitting around from another character. So I wouldn't think too much of it. Uh, because if it was made specifically for him, I would have chosen an ethereal base, right? Um, I also have some of my other characters, like for instance, uh, my newest one, uh, Pyrotechnic and Spicy Arrows. Uh, Spicy Arrows is actually utilizing a, a very specific setup, and so she's forced to use a very specific piece of equipment. So for instance, um, I wanted her to have the Cure Helmet, because this girl does use Energy Shield, and Poison tends to be one of the biggest enemies to you know, that particular thing. So I have a cure helmet on. She also needs the piercing effect. So she needs the 50% piercing um, or, you know, eventually upgrade to a mist bow so she gets 100% piercing. Um, but she is kind of locked into her equipment choices, which only leaves the armor as the available option for choices. Um, one very good armor for Life Leech is the Bone Flesh Templar Code, which is an upgrade from the Plate Mail. Um, and an Ethereal Bone Flesh Templar Code makes a very good choice for a Life Leech armor uh, early on, and also late, later, um, just not end game. Um, it's not really usually one that you put on your Merc for end game stuff. Uh, because it lacks some of the more interesting things like all resistances, uh, crushing blow, and other things that you might want on your Mercenary at that particular time. But it makes a very good stop get piece because number one, it has high defense, and number two, it has life leech, which allows me to use other pieces in the head and weapon slots. Um, next on the list. So, next on the list is another one that is very important, and this one is damage. So, you might not be thinking about this one in terms of importance for keeping your mercenary alive you might be thinking oh well you know how much damage he does why does that have to do with how I keep my mercenary alive well damage is directly proportionate to how much he receives in lifesteal back so having all the life leech in the world having a, you know 100% life leech on your mercenary is meaningless if he doesn't put out any damage to actually get life back one of the most common things I see on a regular basis is people will make themselves an insight polearm. Generally an insight polearm in a very low and very crappy base. Something that is unfortunately not worthy of even being used just simply for the, you know, the benefit of having that meditation aura. But the problem is, is that without life leech and without damage to take advantage of that life leech, your mercenary is most likely going to die. So when you make your insight in something really crappy like a scythe or a regular halberd or something like that, and you're in hell difficulty and your mercenary is trying to pump out the damage that he needs to survive, he's not going to. Um, to give you a very clear example, I could take this particular mercenary and bring him to Frigid Highlands right now, and he is currently set up with a very high damage and a very high amount of life leech. So as long as I have at least the damage and the life leech together, he is most likely going to have an easier time surviving. But remember earlier when I showed you that my mercenary had no faster hit recovery? Look at how quickly he died in a situation where the faster hit recovery mattered. He got stuck in a faster hit recovery loop and he died. So having all of the life leech and having all of the damage isn't enough if he can't actually hit the target. This is why faster hit recovery is at the top of the list. Life leech is below that and damage is at the number three spot because you need the faster hit recovery so that he can attack. You need the life leech so he can steal, and you need the damage so that the life leech can actually do something. And this is why this particular mercenary is just not quite up to spec. Now, normally he doesn't have to fight alone, and this is also a very important thing to remember with mercenaries, is that if you're a melee character, you're going to be in there with him. 
or if you're a necromancer, he's going to have things by his side, so he's not always going to be the center of attention. Um, for instance, if I took him back out here and I put myself in harm's way, he would be able to work relatively easily on his own while the mercenary, uh, you know, while I'm basically the center of attention for what's going on. So it does matter. <laughs> the faster recovery does matter, but really only when he's the focus of the damage. Um, and so, like, as a necromancer, you might not care so much because the necromancers have so many minions and so much of an army spreading all around that generally your mercenary is pretty safe. However, if you're a sorceress that's trying to use your mercenary to tank and you're not going to be in there with him, then faster recovery is all the more important for those particular reasons. And so you need a healthy mix of all three of these things. You need a healthy mix of fast hit recovery, a healthy mix of life leech, and a healthy mix of damage. Now, there are more ways to deal with faster hit recovery stuns than just pumping faster hit recovery. Um, and that leads me into the next most important thing, which is defense. So you might be wondering, why is defense the most one of the most important things on the list? Isn't defense one of the least important stats in the game, as everyone likes to say? And the answer is no, it's really not. Um, defense is actually extremely important, and um, most characters only feel the sting of defense um, when it's not there. Uh, when you have the defense, you don't realize how important it is, but when you have none, when your defense is relatively low, things get nasty. And um, as you can see, my mercenary has about 2,793 defense, which isn't, isn't amazing. Um, if we go over to some of my other mercenaries um, that are running ethereal equipment, um, they actually have much higher. Like, for instance, if I take a look at Pyrotechnics, uh, Pyrotechnic is currently using all ethereal equipment, I believe, except for the helmet, which does need to be upgraded. And so he's running 3,635, uh, which is definitely a much higher number than my Act 2 mercenary at this particular moment. And that's because he has an ethereal spirit monarch, an ethereal K Hagens that's been upgraded to an Archon plate, um, and the, the flickering flame also needs to be an ethereal item, which I'll, I'll work on eventually. Um... This is the, the silly thing about defense, is that defense prevents hits entirely. So physical hits. Obviously, it's not going to do anything for spell damage. But since faster hit recovery requires the monster to hit you to dish out the damage for the stun to activate, if the monster cannot hit you, then you cannot be put into a faster hit recovery stun, which means that extremely high defense mercenaries tend to have a much easier time um, in the faster hit recovery department because their defense is so high. Um, they don't have to worry about getting hit, so they don't have to worry about recovering from a faster hit recovery stun. Um, defense is a very important stat, but it's not something that I would extremely focus on. But when it comes to mercenaries, you definitely want to get them ethereal pieces of equipment because the ethereal piece of equipment has so much higher defense than normal pieces. And when you deck out a mercenary in ethereal helmet, ethereal armor, you know, ethereal shield or ethereal whatever, um, it definitely enhances their capability by far. And um, specifically... Um, this leads us into our next uh, next issue, which is resistances. So resistances are also very important to mercenaries. Some of them, not all of them. Um, and the reason why is because some mercenaries have an innately high amount of resistances, no matter what. Uh, this particular mercenary on my, uh, my, my, my assassin is an Act 3 mercenary. And Act 3 mercenaries actually have the highest resistances out of all of the mercenaries. And even with basically no equipment on, you can see he's still running 73% all res at level 94. Um, this is one of the advantages that they gave this particular mercenary in the mercenary patch. Uh, because what they wanted to do was we wanted to give the Act 3 mercenary a specific advantage over the others. And all of the mercenaries do have one specific advantage over the others. The Act 2 mercenary has auras. The Act 1 mercenary now has the freezing and the... Uh, the exploding arrow, which when she is the only ranged merc as well. The Act 5 mercenary is the tankiest of them all. He has very high faster hit recovery breakpoints, and he also has things like iron skin, which enhances defense and uh, in general just regenerates much faster than the others. Um, so the Act 5 mercenary tends to be the tankiest of the lot, whereas the Act 3 mercenary has very high resistances. However, if we go over to one of my other characters, um, what you'll find is that they don't have as much resistances as the others. So in the case of my spicy arrows, 
Uh, my girl is only rocking 49% resistances. In She's level 90. Um, and I don't really have a lot of resistance equipment on her either. Um, with the exception of the Cure Helmet, she's running no resistance equipment. Um, and 49%, unfortunately, is not really enough. And this segues me into the next topic, which is buffs. That's right. Buffs. B-U-F-F-S. Buffs. Buffs, also known as enhancements of various qualities, whether it be something as simple as casting enchant on your mercenary to give them more attack rating, which will help them hit, uh, whether it be something as simple as casting battle orders or shout or, you know, um, battle command on your mercenary. Uh, these things can be extremely useful to your mercenary to help them in their, you know, their cause, give them more HP, give them more skill points, um, give them more defense, um, things like Heart of the Wolverine, which give them better attack rating, things like the um, fanaticism aura, which will give them more damage, which will help them life leech, uh, attack faster, which will, again, get more life leech because more hits with more damage equals more life leech. Um, there are tons and tons of ways that you can enhance your mercenary through buffs. And um, it is very important to remember that, um, that you are capable of helping your mercenary stay alive just as much as the mercenary himself can help himself stay alive. Um, even something as simple as a cure helmet can have a huge effect on your survivability of your mercenary. Which leads me into the next issue um, of keeping your mercenary alive, and this is situational... Situational issues. Now, just like a player, you can't really prepare for everything. You, you're not going to be able to make your character immune to fire, immune to lightning, immune to cold, immune to physical, immune to magic, and, you know, just simply like the tankiest beast on the planet and then still put out the damage that you want to be able to kill monsters. The problem with this is, is that mercenaries are the same. It's very difficult to set up a mercenary for every conceivable scenario. Let's say, for instance, you're a mercenary... Uh, or a player who loves to farm Travancall, then you need to set up your mercenary specifically for Travancall. Um, there are ways that you can do this. One of the most common is getting yourself an Ethereal Guardian Angel, which has a bonus to the maximum resistances of your the person who's wearing it. And then to top it off with something like a Kira's Guardian or a... Um, a very nice, perfect rock stopper, which is a little bit better than a Curious Guardian, uh, because this will give them the resistances that they need to survive. However, if you took that same mercenary with the Kira's Guardian, uh, Akira's and the Guardian Angel Templar Coat combo, and you brought him to the cow level, it would be relatively useless. Why would it be relatively useless? Because the cows are putting out mainly physical damage, and having all the elemental resistances in the world doesn't help a mercenary if they are getting beat down with physical attacks. In which case, in the cow level, a much better way to equip your mercenary would be something like a shaft stop, most likely with a, a shale rune in it for the faster hit recovery, and then uh, make sure it's ethereal so that it has high defense. Uh, upgraded, of course, to the uh, bone weave, which is going to get the highest defense, the highest physical damage reduction, along with some faster hit recovery as well. And then top it off with something like a bulwark for an additional physical damage reduction as well, probably bringing him up to about 40% DR. This is how you have to equip your mercenaries to keep them alive. You have to think about what you're doing and where you are. If you're a Javazon who mainly does cows, then yes, you're going to want to equip him for the cows. If you're a Trav runner, a barbarian who mainly does Trav, then yes, you're going to equip your mercenary with equipment specifically for that purpose. Um, for instance, my mercenary <clears throat> is a situational awareness mercenary as well. She is a boson and I am an Enchantress. So what I did was, is I grabbed some equipment specifically for her um, so that she could take advantage of my ridiculous enchant. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give her 
my enchant and make it so that she has access to the same things that I do. So I have set her up in a way that is specific to my character. I've given her the 50% pierce so that she can take advantage of my enchant better with her exploding arrow. And I've also given her the cure helmet to take advantage of the fact that I'm using energy shield because poison is actually pretty damn nasty with energy shield and I don't want to have to deal with it. Um, and so she is set up specifically for me. And in the case of the Act 2 mercenary, there are hundreds of different ways that you can set up a mercenary to survive. Uh, for instance, maybe you specifically need might. Uh, maybe you're a necromancer, so you're running a might merc. Well, guess what? He's going to do lots and lots of damage as a might merc because might is going to enhance his physical damage. Um, maybe you need some attack rating. So Blessed Aim is going to be your best choice. Holy Freeze is probably the best choice for survivability just simply because it slows down all the monsters around him and helps to prevent those monsters from beating him so mercilessly. Um, Thorns is a great choice when you're a low-level uh, summoner of any type. And, um, and then you also have the uh, Prayer Merc, which is good for regeneration. Uh, it's unfortunate that the Prayer doesn't actually work on him uh, because they have their own regeneration. And it's important to talk about this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, I'm going to segue into the mercenary or merc regeneration. All right. So this is something that you have to be aware of: is that mercenaries do have the ability to regenerate damage, but they cannot do so when poisoned. And replenished life also does not work on them. So the new bulwark helmet has like 30 replenished life on it, and that does not work on the mercenary, unfortunately. Um, this is due to the fact that they have their own innate regeneration system that is separate from our regeneration system. Um, so if you take a mercenary down to I don't know, River of Flame, and I'm going to let my mercenary get beat down real quick. Hold on. Of course, she's doing her best over here. That's right. Kick his butt. Kick his butt. Kick his butt. Oh, why are you picking on me? I ain't do nothing. Now, one of the things that you can do to help your mercenary survive is you can teleport her away when she starts to get hurt. So as her HP starts to go down, you can clearly see that she's taking damage up here. Um, her regeneration will kick in if you get her away from the battle. Um, so the easiest way to get her away from the battle as a sorceress um, is just to teleport her away. So in this particular situation, I would um, wait until she's about to die, uh, which it looks like she's going to win the fight, um, and teleport her away, which would allow her to regen. And you can see, you can watch her HP, it slowly comes back. Now, the Act 5 Mercenary has the highest regen out of all of the Mercenaries, um, and I believe the Act 3 Mercenary has the lowest regeneration out of all the Mercenaries. Uh, but this regeneration is very fast, and it unfortunately does not work when the Mercenary is poisoned, which is going to segue us into the next part of the uh, How to Keep Your Mercenary Alive uh, video, uh, which is Mercs Hate Poison. Alright, so this is a really important one because mercenaries just really, really, really don't like poison. Not only can mercenaries die from poison, when players cannot, by the way, um, but mercenaries literally have their regeneration cancelled out during the time when they are poisoned. Um, and let me see if I can get her poisoned really quickly. Um, and now that she is poisoned, she she is stuck in this. So her HP is stuck at 1,355, and she is slowly draining as long as the poison is on her. Now, as, as soon as the poison disappears, she's able to regenerate again. Notice now she's going up. And this is one of the reasons why the Cure Helmet is so powerful on mercenaries, because not only does it apply fast hit recovery for them, which is the number one thing that we need, it gives them increased maximum life, and poison resistance and poison length reduction, but it also applies the cleansing aura, which removes that poison from them as quickly as possible and allows them to regenerate. Um, removing your poison from your mercenary is crucial. <laughs> many, 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 many times I have been running along and uh, my mercenary has gotten poisoned, and I immediately go back to town, talk to the nearest healer, and cure the poison off of them. 
Another way that you can cure the poison off of them as you're running around is if you find a well. Uh, wells, for some reason or another, will cure poison off of everything under your command. The mercenary, your golem, your army, your entire necromancer army, your entire wolf army, anything that is poison that is under your command will immediately be healed upon touching a well. Um, and wells are extremely powerful as you're running around. And I would take advantage of them all the time. Um, anytime you find a well. Um, they are usable twice, which means you can clear off poisons two times, which is absolutely great. And they are often all over the place. Um, and they can heal up your entire army and your mercenaries. So if you're in a situation where you're in trouble, you just tap that well one time, everybody's cured, and you're good to go. Um, so keep in mind that poison can be a horrible enemy to your mercenary and is probably going to get him killed on a regular basis. In fact, many people lose their mercenaries on the Act 2 wave of Bale because, well, the poison is freaking calacious. Uh, crit poisons, which is a whole other thing, is also extremely nasty uh, because crit poisons dish out their damage at a much higher rate and will just drain you into oblivion so fast. Um, and this is one of the reasons why, on this particular character, I chose a Cure Helmet because I'm running Energy Shield and I have very little life. And one of the things that goes straight through Energy Shield is Poison. Um, the next issue that I want to talk about is one that you can't really control but you need to know about. And this is Boss Penalties. Um, and I actually have a graphic for this. Ah, uh -huh, graphics, yes. So bosses have a specific penalty um, that prevents mercenaries from dishing out large amounts of damage to them. And I'm pretty sure this is because somewhere along the line they probably had decided that they did not want mercenaries um, killing the act bosses for you. Um, and as you can see here, hirelings versus bosses. Hireling damage is 50% against bosses in normal. 35% in Nightmare, 25% in Hell Difficulties. Additionally, Hirelings take 10 times more damage from End Act bosses. So, not only is your Mercenary in Hell Difficulty getting a 75% reduction in his damage output, but he also takes 10 times more damage from the boss. Um, so, when your Mercenary dies to a boss, it's important to remember this, because it's not really his fault. If the mercenary were allowed to fight the boss at his current capacity, he probably would be okay. But because he is in this penalty mode, this penalty box, where he dishes out less damage, which as we talked about in the beginning of the video, less damage means less life leech, right? So because he's taking less damage, or, or actually you know, he's dishing out less damage, then he's also getting less life leech back. Um, we also talked about how FHR was so important and how FHR only triggers when you take a large amount of damage. You have to take one twelfth of your HP and damage to trigger an FHR stun. Well, if he's taking ten times more damage from the end act bosses, don't you think it's much easier to enter a faster hit recovery state? Because the amount of damage that he's taking will put him into an FHR stun extremely easily. So if he's entering an FHR stun with every single attack that the boss makes and he's doing less damage when he actually hits, of course he's going to eventually die. Now you definitely need faster hit recovery for a mercenary to take on a boss and they need exceedingly high damage numbers to overcome the 75% penalty that is applied to them when they fight act bosses. And this is not something that you can really change. You just need to be aware that when your mercenary dies to an act boss, it's not really his fault. He can't really help it. He's under some pretty strict penalties, and um, for all of the normal monsters in the game, for all of the elites and the champions, he's fine. It's really just the end act bosses, Diablo, and Dariel, Duriel, and Bale. Um, when he fights those, he is under just extreme penalties. Um, next on the list is a um, kind of an unimportant one, but also an important one at the same time. And it's you need to avoid useless equipment. All right, this is a silly one, but a lot of people don't know that certain pieces of equipment don't have any effect on your mercenary. Um, when you're looking at a piece of equipment, like for instance, the cure helmet, 
what on these effects is actually helping my mercenary and what is not. Well, if you look at his uh, you know, character panel here, um, you'll see things that actually help him and things that don't, right? So does he have vitality? I got strength, I got dexterity, but there's no vitality on the panel. There's no energy on the panel. Mercenaries do not have vitality and they do not have energy, um, not in terms of what players have. So when you have something like this that adds vitality, it doesn't give any benefit to the mercenary. They do, however, have life, so 5% increased maximum life does in fact help them. So as you can see, I go from 1,590 to 1,669 by putting on the helmet because it has an increased maximum life of 5%. And to show you that the vitality is not actually affecting them, I feel like the easiest way is just to bring up a calculator. Um, so I'm going to bring it up on my screen here. We're going to run the numbers. So 1,590 plus 5% is 79.5, which brings us to 1,669.5. So when we put this helmet on, we should be at 1,669.5. And it probably rounds down. So it does. So 1,669 life. So the 10 vitality, which should technically be giving her life, if it did, would give her probably about 2, two HP per vite point, which would be 20 vitality. So she would be sitting at something more like 1,660, uh, 1, 80, so 89. She would be sitting at 89 instead, which she is not. Um, also on here is a... Um, we got fast hit recovery that works we got poison resistance that works poison length reduction that also works um, so everything on this helmet is everything except for the vitality is actually affecting her now the kuko kushaku has plus three bow and crossbow skills amazon that does in fact affect her and you can check that relatively easily just by simply taking off the bow and looking at the level of exploding arrow so exploding arrow is level 18 and now you can see it's level 15. So you can see that it's actually affecting the mercenary. Um, fires, explosive arrows, or bolts. This one is a little bit of a confusing one because it will often show the animation that she is firing them, but it does not actually work. It's been tested. So despite the fact that she will display firing these arrows, it does not actually work that way. 50% piercing does in fact work, uh, and so does the 40 to 180 fire damage. That does in fact work. Plus three immolation arrow does not, because she does not have immolation arrow on her bar. So it does not give her the skill, and she also does not get any benefit from it. Um, in the case of the Templar Code, everything on this is affecting her. The attack rating, the life leech, the open wounds, the defense, all of it. Um, and this is what's important when choosing a piece of equipment for your, your character, your, your mercenary. Um, energy, mana, anything that has to do with energy or mana is absolutely useless on a mercenary. It does not matter. Um, also, breakpoints. You have to remember that some mercenaries have very specific breakpoints, and you're not going to be able to pass them. Uh, for instance, on Pyrotechnic, um, when you take a look at her mercenary, um, you'll see that I have some very specific breakpoints. And I talked about these earlier in the video, but I feel like it is important. So first off, um, he, he is sitting at 86% faster cast, which is his breakpoint. 87 means nothing. That extra 1% does nothing for the, for the mercenary whatsoever. Being at 86% is exactly the breakpoint that he can hit. He can't hit any higher breakpoint. So having any additional faster cast on this character, putting on something like Skin of the Viper Magi, which has 30% faster cast, has no effect. Um, he has extremely high resistances. So because his resistances are so ungodly high, he doesn't need any resistance equipment. So putting resistance equipment on him is useless. So instead of putting resistance equipment on him, I'm putting other pieces of equipment, things that will enhance his combat potential bringing his faster cast up to his 86% breakpoint, bringing his faster hit recovery up to his 133% breakpoint, which I currently still need three more percent, and then enhancing other things that will make him uh, more powerful, like his negative enemy fire resistance and plus fire skills. Uh, fire skills and plus to skills enhance his level of enchant, so he's currently at level 43 enchant, which is pretty darn beast. And um, as you can see, he's got plus two, plus one, plus two, 
plus three, and all of that is bringing up that level of enchant higher and higher. So he's currently at 41 without the shield, and then he's only at 38 without the helmet, and so forth and so on. Um, so make sure that you avoid specific pieces of equipment that will have relatively no benefit to your mercenary. Uh, for instance, um, even with jewels and, and like runes and things like that, as you're going over jewels and runes and you're looking at them for potentially what might be useful to your mercenary, um, this particular mercenary doesn't block. Um, he also doesn't attack anything. So anything that has to do with physical damage is completely useless for him because for the most part, he will never swing his sword. You might occasionally see him swing it one time over like several games, but for the most part, it's completely useless to him. Um, and um, the same thing goes for the other mercenaries. So like when you're dealing with mercenaries like the Act 5 mercenary, plus the skills might not necessarily be the best thing. Uh, they would much be much better off with other items. Um, and um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I will add a caution on specific use case items, like for instance, items that have no damage output. Um, there is a large number of items in the game that basically have no damage output. Um, the edge bow is one of them, by the way. It doesn't have any actual physical damage increase. Although it does have damage to demons and damage to undead, that does not work the same as weapon enhanced damage, which actually enhances the damage of the weapon. And um, I can name off quite a few of them just off the top of my head. Uh, we've got Edgebow, Lawbringer, um, Voice of Reason, uh, so forth and so on, that basically have no enhanced damage on them whatsoever. And the problem with this is, is that as we talked about earlier, damage is very important to Life Leech. So if you are running one of these very low damage weapons on your mercenary, you have to be aware that you are gimping his Life Leech potential. And this goes for players too. If you're using one of these low damage weapons on your character, um, you are also gimping your life leech potential. Um, earlier, I had uh, built a Holy Freeze Paladin, and one of the things I had considered was a Voice of Reason for my main hand weapon. But as I played around with it, I realized that Voice of Reason just didn't have the life leech potential that I needed, and oftentimes I was dying because I couldn't steal enough life back. And it wasn't because I didn't have enough life leech. I had plenty. It was mainly just because, well, I didn't have what I needed in damage output to take advantage of it. Um, so if you do end up using one of these on the, say, Act 5 Mercenary, I would recommend pairing it up with another weapon that does physical damage. That way you at least have one weapon that is actually life leeching while the other is providing the utility that you're looking for. For the Act 2 Mercenary... Unfortunately, when you put one of the weapons on the Act 2 mercenary, he has no additional weapon to attack with, so you gimp him almost entirely. Um, one of the most common um, weapons that people like to put on their mercenaries that is exactly this type of gimpingness is the Pride Polearm. The Pride Polearm has concentration on it, and it is a very powerful tool that you can use to enhance your summoner um, necromancer or summoner druid but the problem with pride is that it has basically no physical damage whatsoever and you have essentially gimped your mercenary in terms of life leech um, so when you utilize the pride weapon on a mercenary it is generally with the understanding that he is fully and well supported by essentially an army you wouldn't use a pride weapon on a mercenary that's not supported by an army because he would not be able to stand on his own Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we are just talking for 40 minutes on how to keep your mercenary alive. And I do understand that there are a lot of very unique situations in the mercenary land. So if you have specific questions on your specific setup and your specific mercenary, uh, feel free to put them down in the comments. I will do my best to answer. And as always, thanks for watching and uh, keep watching.